Dr. Shannon Heck. I'm a dermatologist practicing at private practice at Southwest Skin Specialists in Scottsdale, Arizona. I see patients for general dermatologic issues as well as cosmetic issues. Acne is a very common dermatological disease state affecting approximately 40 to 50 percent of adolescents. Um, it's composed of many different lesions. I have patients coming in that tell me, I have a pimple, I don't have acne. Well, acne is a pimple. Acne is open and closed comedones, which are blackheads and whiteheads. Uh, pimples are red bumps and nodules are cysts. The causes of acne are unknown, but we do know what exacerbates acne. Hormones, genetics, stress, uh, menstruation for females, or when, when a woman begins her period, all of those factors can exacerbate acne. Hormones are one of the main causes of acne. So as women age, they get a higher percentage of testosterone to estrogen ratio in their body. And so they start noticing things like unwanted hair growth and they can develop acne when they've never had acne before in their lives. I frequently see women in their 40s and 50s who tell me I shouldn't have to ask you about wrinkles and acne, but it's a very common problem. Accutane is a fairly old drug, but it is an absolute gem of a drug. There's nothing like it. There's no other drug on the market that can state that they cure acne permanently 80% of the time. Um, it is very difficult to prescribe because I pledge is a set of rules and regulations that was put into place in March of 2006. We only use it for the severe scarring, cystic acne. That's when it's indicated. Um, but it is a wonderful drug. It is a five, approximately a five-month treatment. Many labs um, have to be drawn. The uh, patients have to see their dermatologist monthly, but it is a wonderful drug. Accutane itself doesn't increase the risk of pregnancy, but when a woman of childbearing age is on Accutane, she has to be on two forms of birth control. Um, and abstinence only counts for one. So we place almost everybody on a birth control pill um, and then they have to, to choose a second form of birth control. Uh, what to expect when visiting a dermatologist is a pleasant experience. You are asked to fill out paperwork asking about medical history questions. Um, because we are physicians, we do care about medicines you're taking. We care about past medical history, about past surgical history. You should be asked about the problem or reason you're being seen, and that usually is done by a nurse. And in our office, we always recommend full body skin checks with the visits because you could come in for your acne and have a melanoma or a basal cell skin cancer that you don't know about on your back. So it's very important to get a full body skin check. A full body skin check consists of getting into a gown in your dermatologist's office. You can leave your undergarments on or take them off. The dermatologist will come in and look at all your skin, check your moles, sometimes use special lights or magnifiers to see particular areas of the skin. Usually special attention is paid to the face and to the ears and sun exposed areas, but we look everywhere to check for, for bad moles. A patient has a mole that's slightly atypical appearing, but not atypical enough to lose the mole for a scar. I recommend uh, pictures. You take a picture of the mole every month and catalog it. Most people now have a digital camera, and you always want to have a measuring instrument in the picture. When the picture is taken, the camera should be placed on macro mode, which is the little flower picture that appears in your camera. Patients um, frequently ask me, does it matter how I sleep for formation of wrinkles? And it does. Uh, but I say first and foremost is to get a good night's sleep. But poor sleep contributes to aging. So if you have to sleep on your stomach, that's fine. Sleeping on your back, keeping the pressure off your face does help you age better. You do get sleep creases as you age. Um, they can be minimized through choice of fabrics. So if you choose a slick fabric such as silk or satin, um, that's a better choice than cotton, which has a higher friction coefficient. If given the option, sleeping on the back, minimizing pressure on the face is better and allows better aging and less wrinkle formation. So a few tips to avoid skin cancer. Um, avoiding sun is the most important thing you could do, and you can do that by staying out of the sun from 10 to 4. If you're going to be in the sun from 10 to 4, 
um, or anytime you want to apply a broad spectrum sunscreen SPF 30 or greater uh, quite a few different clothing manufacturers make clothing with SPF impregnated in the clothing so broad brimmed hats with SPF are wonderful you can even obtain a laundry detergent that gives your clothes SPF 30 that lasts for 30 washings. But there's really no optimal exposure to the sun. The sun is a carcinogen and so to get adequate vitamin D levels we recommend taking supplements in oral form. Whether or not you plan on being in the sun, you should make application of sunscreen part of your normal morning routine because this the UVA rays can make it through windows such as car windows and that's why frequently the left side of the face looks slightly more aged than the right because of a lifetime of driving. Dry skin affects many individuals. Uh, it is influenced by how often you take a shower or bath, the temperature of water, the temperature of the water, the hotter the water, the drier the skin becomes, and where you live. If you live in a humid environment, your skin stays better moisturized than if you live in, say, an arid desert environment. As a dermatologist, we do diagnose dry skin on clinical examination by visual inspection. Risk factors for dry skin if left untreated include dermatitis, so the skin barrier can actually break down forming microscopic fissures. Those fissures become red, itchy, irritated, and then they require treatment by a dermatologist with something like a topical steroid. Dry skin can be treated in many different ways by a proper selection of soaps or non-soap cleansers in the bath or shower. We tend to recommend non-soap cleansers such as Cetaphil or CeraVe. Also soaps cut with moisturizers like Dove uh, for sensitive skin or oil of Olay. Dry skin can also be treated by minimizing water exposure. So the more you expose your skin to water, the drier it becomes. It's kind of counterintuitive. You want to moisturize liberally after the bath or shower and keep the baths or showers to 10 minutes or less. Moisturizers should be a nice thick cream. Lotions are frequently chosen and they spread slightly easier than creams but creams are better at locking moisture in the skin. So something nice and thick that comes out of a tub or a tube, something like Cetaphil cream or CeraVe cream. Vanna cream is also a good option. Oil is not as effective as you may think for moisturizing the skin. A huge study was done comparing mineral oil to Vaseline and looking at how well those two products can lock moisture in the skin. The Vaseline was 75 times better at locking moisture in the skin. So people don't frequently choose Vaseline, but you can kind of extrapolate and go beyond that data to a cream being better than an oil. Um, sunscreen is one of the most important anti-aging creams there is. The sun accounts for 80% of our aging, and the sun also gives us skin cancer. So by applying sunscreen daily, we minimize the risk of skin cancers. It's important to make it a part of your daily routine. Every morning prior to putting makeup on, after washing the face, apply a liberal coat of sunscreen to face, neck, ears if the hair's back, arms if the arms are exposed, any exposed body area. And often patients apply a lot less sunscreen than they should. People usually use 25 to 50 percent of their recommended application. A one ounce application to cover face, neck, and exposed arms and legs is recommended and that would be enough to fit in a shot glass. A choice of sunscreen is also very important. You want to make sure your sunscreen is broad spectrum. I do prefer mineral blocking agents on the face and neck because they don't contribute so much to free radical formation. So something with zinc oxide or titanium dioxide or a blend of the two. I do like avobenzone or parsol as an active ingredient for the body. SPF 30 or higher is the SPF generally recommended by dermatologists. If you apply an SPF 15 correctly, you block 93% of the rays. If you apply an SPF 30 correctly, you block 97% of the rays. So it really is a law of diminishing returns once you get over 15. But since most people don't apply the sunscreen correctly to begin with, I prefer the 30 over the 15 because if you apply a 30 incorrectly, I figure you at least get a, a 15. You can absolutely still get sunburned on a cloudy day. When the clouds are in the sky, you still feel 80% of the UV radiation coming through. And it's even more dangerous because you don't feel the heat, so people tend to stay out longer thinking that it's safe. And that's why people burn frequently on cloudy days. 
the sun provides 80% of your aging. So the, the biggest, cheapest uh, form of anti-aging product is a sunscreen every morning. I also recommend antioxidants frequently under SPF by choosing something with vitamin C and E or coenzyme Q10. You can give your sunscreen a bit of a boost. I also like topical retinoids in the evening. You can get retinoids over the counter in the form of retinol. Retinol is the weakest retinoid. To get a little stronger retinoid, you have to visit your doctor's office and get a prescription for something like Retin-A, Renova, or Differin. Antioxidants protect the skin by scavenging free radicals. So sun or UV energy can cause free radical formation on the skin, and that free radical formation can cause DNA damage. When DNA damage builds up and the body is unable to repair it as fast as it's occurring, um, that's how skin cancer is produced. I'd like to give you some tips for recognizing moles that could be going bad or turning into cancer. Um, the AAD has a mnemonic they use, A, B, C, D. A is for asymmetry, so if a mole starting to look asymmetrical, one side not looking like the other, that could be a sign the mole's going bad. B is for borders. Borders should be sharp and defined. It shouldn't look like the pigment in the mole is leaking out of the mole. C is for color. Um, we want the mole to be basically all one color. If there's multiple colors in the mole, that could be a sign the mole's going bad. And D is diameter, six millimeters or less. And that's kind of a broad criteria. A lot of big moles are just fine, but that's kind of something to look for. And you should do monthly mole checks. So look over your skin every month and see where your moles are, because anything new is also something that should get your attention. Moles should not be changing. They should be stable over time. Shingles is the reoccurrence of chicken pox in the skin. You cannot get shingles if you've never had chicken pox or the chicken pox vaccine. So shingles, once you've had chicken pox, you have the virus your entire life. And when you get stressed, when your immune system wanes from aging or infectious disease, the shingles will come out. Shingles is clinically diagnosed by visual inspection and the diagnosis can also be aided by a culture or a scraping if need be. Shingles is unilateral. Sometimes it crosses the midline, but that's fairly infrequently. So it's on one side and it pops up as little blisters and the pain can be very intense. Shingles has been misdiagnosed as kidney stones and heart attacks because the pain can be so severe. It can come anywhere in the body. Um, and the pain precedes the eruption of the skin outbreak. So the pain is first, and then some redness and swelling, and then the blisters. Uh, treatments that are available for shingles are a, is a systemic antiviral pill. So timing is everything with this pill. It's very important to take it at the beginning of the eruption to minimize possible complications with the shingles. The pills given um, are usually Valtrex or Acyclovir. Those are antiviral pills. And we give them as soon as the eruption starts. And Valtrex is a seven day course. Uh, some side effects from the shingle virus or some complications include scarring and a lingering pain called postherpetic neuralgia. That pain happens because shingles uses the skin nerves to travel in, and the virus inflames the nerves, and that inflammation can take up to a year to go away. Shingles is contagious, and um, most people have either had chicken pox the real way, the old-fashioned way, or had the vaccine. Um, but if you have shingles, you need to stay away from unvaccinated individuals and infants less than one year of age because they haven't been vaccinated yet. You can transmit shingles through direct contact with the blister fluid, but it's a respiratory virus, so you do secrete very small amounts of the virus through breathing and coughing. Eczema is described as the itch that rashes. It is a hereditary condition that can be influenced by the environment. Um, it's frequently seen in younger individuals, often outgrown. It's red, itchy, irritated skin. Eczema is treated many different ways. The staple of eczema treatment is minimizing hot water exposure, um, choice of suitable 
moisturizers and soaps, so non-soap cleansers, soaps cut with moisturizers are very important, and moisturizing the skin liberally with a nice thick fragrance-free cream after water exposure like baths or showers is very important. That's the mainstay. For flares, we often choose topical steroids. The strength of the topical steroid depends on how bad the eczema is and the location um, of the body where the eczema is. Long-term risk factors of eczema untreated through chronic scratching and rubbing of the skin open wounds form and can lead to infections. Botox is used to treat upper face wrinkles, the frown lines or the 11s that a lot of people talk about. That's the most frequent area for Botox. But the forehead wrinkles, the crow's feet or wrinkles around the eyes, those are all great places for Botox. Fillers are volumizers. They are better used for lower face wrinkles. And these are generalizations. Sometimes Botox is used for lower face and fillers are used for upper face. But in general, fillers help the nasolabial folds and the marionette lines. And those are the most common areas. A new area that fillers are frequently used for are cheeks to rejuvenate and volumize the cheeks, again, giving the face a more youthful um, appearance. All dermatologists know about Botox and fillers such as Restylane and Juvederm. Some will know more than others and if, if you have a dermatologist that doesn't inject, they will be able to refer you to somebody that does. Botox is a very safe product. It's been around for a very long time. The biggest risk factor of Botox is a bruise at the injection site. The, there's also a one half of a 1% risk of a slight eyelid droop that can happen when injecting the frown area. Um, that is a very rare risk and it does resolve itself in two to three weeks. That's the bad and the good about Botox. Botox wears off, um, but then you have to repeat the treatment about every three to four months. Uh, the long-term risk factors of acne is scarring. Uh, acne can be very detrimental to a teenager's self-esteem and um, their confidence, so it's very important to treat the acne before it leads to permanent scarring. Um, ranging from topical therapies to systemic antibiotics or pills taken by mouth to Accutane, which is a, a big drug used to treat acne. Cystic acne, if I had a patient that came in with a few acne cysts, I would choose most likely two forms of topical agents. I almost always pick a topical retinoid Retinoids are wonderful, they're anti-aging, they're anti-acne, they help rejuvenate the skin, and they help the skin normalize its sloughing. The skin usually takes 28 days to get from the very bottom layer to the top and off. With acne lesions, the skin's sticky and clogs the pores. Um, so retinoids are wonderful. A topical antibiotic or a benzoyl peroxide agent I often choose, and a systemic antibiotic or an antibiotic taken as a pill form um, I often give for the deeper acne bumps or cysts. Warts are caused by an infectious agent, the, the HPV virus, the human papilloma virus. There are over a hundred different types of the HPV virus, but only a few types cause the common warts. Um, it is a, a frequent problem seen by the dermatologist and often requires numerous office visits to treat because it is an infection. Warts don't usually cause significant harm. It's, it's unlike cervical warts that can lead to cancer, um, but they can spread. So you can spread them over your body or, or they're contagious. You could give them to somebody else. There is a very rare risk of a wart causing squamous cell carcinoma. As I said, it's very rare and it's only associated with certain wart types. Um, but if a wart starts growing, looking atypical, bleeding quite a bit, it's definitely something that the dermatologist should see. Well, right behind me, I have a cryo gun and it sprays liquid nitrogen, which is a very, very cold spray that gives the wart frostbite, causes it to scab up and hopefully peel off completely, although often it takes numerous treatments. Over the counter, salicylic acid preparations are very effective, as is duct tape. Duct tape acts as an irritant to the wart and it really does help. There are other topical sensitizers that we use, such as squaric acid. It works very similar to poison ivy. We expose just the wart area of the skin to it um, to sensitize the patient. And the second time the patient uh, experiences contact with the squaric acid, the skin becomes very inflamed and angry and kind of tries to eat the wart up from the inside out. Squaric acid is a topical sensitization treatment that can be provided at your dermatologist's office. 
Laser hair removal is a safe option for removing unwanted hair as long as it's dark hair. The laser, we don't have the technology to remove gray hairs or light hairs. So the safest patient for laser hair removal is light skin and dark hair. Darker skinned individuals can risk hyperpigmentation or getting dark spots on their skin from the laser. The laser targets the pigment in the hair root and the darker the skin is, the more the laser sees the pigment in the skin instead of the pigment in the hair root. That being said, there are safe options for patients of darker skin. You just have to be really careful who you go to. I would recommend going somewhere that's supervised by a physician, um, somewhere that has a really good reputation. Moms, I'd like to tell you how to advocate for your children. Um, you want to make sure and apply broad spectrum sunscreen SPF 30 or higher to their skin every morning. Just make it part of their morning routine. They, they get their hair done, they wash their face, and then either they or you apply the sunscreen. Um, I have a two and a three year old little boy and they both used to scream with the sunscreen. Now they're so used to it as part of the morning they actually remind me just in case I forget. I do like mineral blockers for children better than chemical blockers. That's personal opinion, but I prefer zinc oxide, which is a broad spectrum mineral blocker. It's better tolerated. I think it's a little easier on the skin. The greater the sun exposure in youth, the larger the number of moles that are produced on the body. And the greater number of moles you have, the higher your risk factor is for melanoma. So it's very important from an early age to apply sun protection all the time. The World Health Organization has recently come out and stated that tanning beds are a carcinogen. You, are 75, uh, you have a 75% higher risk of melanoma if you used tanning beds in your 20s or earlier. Um, it is a very dangerous way to get a tan and it's not recommended. If, if you really like the darker color of the skin, there are plenty of over-the-counter um, options such as the dye applied to the skin and self tanners. The risks associated with self tanners are very minimal. Any topical product you apply to your skin you risk an allergy but that would be very very rare. They're safe products unlike tanning beds that have large percentage of UVA and UVB rays which age the skin prematurely as well as expose you to a much greater risk of skin cancer. Cold sores are infections um, by the herpes simplex virus and about 90% of the American population is infected with the herpes simplex virus type 1. That's the most common form, the form that affects uh, the lips. Cold sores are caused by the herpes simplex virus and this is a communicable virus so it is contagious and you don't have to have the eruption necessarily to transmit the virus. Although the most common way is to uh, have skin on skin t contact with an open sore, cold sore. If you do have a cold sore, you should refrain from contact with anybody to avoid transmitting the disease until it's completely healed over. If you have a cold sore once, you have the virus for the rest of your life. And everybody has a different amount of eruptions based on your immune system and your stress level. Injuries can bring out the herpes virus or cold sores. Even an injury with a brush of your toothbrush or a sunburn can trigger eruptions of the herpes virus. They're called cold sores because often when you're infected with a virus such as a cold, your immune system's busy and the herpes virus takes advantage of that and comes out. Um, it's very important to get treatment as soon as possible. Uh, I always pick a systemic treatment such as acyclovir or Valtrex, that's a pill you take, at the first sign of the virus. So the first tingling or the first blister, you start taking the pill immediately. It's a very short course of medication and it can either abort the eruption entirely or it can cut the length of time of the eruption by 50%. The two medications I mentioned, acyclovir and Valtrex, are both available by prescription from your doctor. Cold sores can take one to two weeks to heal and they can scar. That's why I always treat them fairly aggressively with the pills. The pills are very safe. They affect the viral replication. They don't affect us at all. Although occasionally they can cause headache, that's very rare. I think it's worth taking the pills to avoid a possible permanent scar on your face.
to expedite healing of a cold sore, not only can you take one of the pills that I mentioned, acyclovir Valtrex, but you can also keep the area moisturized with something like Vaseline or Aquaphor. Hydrated wounds always heal faster, so you never want to let a wound dry out. My name is Shannon Heck, and I'm a board certified dermatologist. I have a specialty in cosmetic dermatology. Um, my path to dermatology was initially starting in college, actually. I used to ask everybody I met if they enjoyed what they did, all the professionals, dentists, doctors. And in one of the conversations with my roommate's mom, who was internal medicine, I asked her if she enjoyed what she did, which she loves internal medicine. But I said, would you do anything different? And she said, if I had to do it again, I'd go into dermatology. And I was a junior in um, college during that conversation. And so I switched and I graduated in four years, but I had to go back for a fifth to fulfill all of my pre-med requirements. And so I got into medical school knowing I wanted to be a dermatologist. The most rewarding aspect in my job is helping patients feel good about themselves and looking how they feel. I hear every day, I don't want to look sad. I don't want to look tired. And it's just so rewarding to turn that sadness around and lift the mouth corners or lift the cheeks and take away that tired appearance because people really want to portray how they feel inside and sometimes there's a little bit of a discrepancy. It's so much more than it used to be. We can lift the cheeks, which takes the weight from the lower face. We can lift the mouth corners. We can uh, volumize the temples. So I really enjoy a complete facial rejuvenation, not just focusing on one line or wrinkle.